so I was driving home from the gym the other night and I couldn't help but notice how beautiful the sky was. It was gorgeous. So I was just staring in wonder and just kind of in awe of how big y'all is, you know? And I was just like, man, I want to know you, you know? I want to know you even more. I, I cannot wait till I get to see you face to face and not die and just hear how you hung the the heavens and hung established the earth and all of your plans all of your prophecies like the depths of who you are i look forward to that just literally seeing and experiencing what i missed and um what he showed me on this earth that was right you know just something as simple as the sky is so vast my heart was just bursting just can't wait till messiah comes back can't wait to see him and his glory, just fullness of his glory. And it got me thinking, I've seen a many a sky in my 33 years of life. But when I looked up and yeah, it would be like, oh, it's so beautiful, Abba, thank you. You know, so beautiful, God, thank you. But it wasn't ever, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be near you. It's all I want. I'm thankful growing up in church and having the knowledge that I started with. I didn't quite like the um, blasphemies and the false teachings, but you know, I did get an essence and I'm thankful for that. But if I was being honest with myself at six years old, while I did love Jesus and I did, you know, I did have that love for him, but at six years old when I got baptized, I just wanted to get dunked in the water. I did. My little six-year-old self said I accept Yeshua as my Lord and Savior, and I, and I did. But I just really wanted to get dunked in the water in front of everybody. I thought that would have been so cool. And then when I was older, like 15, and I dedicated to that celibate ceremony that you do at the Baptist Church. And, um, and while I, I, I meant it then, um, accepting him was more of a, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want the lake of fire. I don't want the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. I don't, I don't want that. It seems highly unpleasant. Um, I didn't have that overwhelming love to get to know him. I just had an overwhelming, I did have love, but I had more of what it was, was I don't want to experience that anguish. But as I was driving in that car, and for three, almost four years, looking at that sky, the desire for him, the love for him, the desire to want to please him and walk in his way, just because I, I get to know him, you know? I get to experience his holiness because he defines what is holy he gives what is holy and walking in his way it just brings you closer because you're getting that sin out and you're getting closer to him but the desire that I felt and for have felt for three years and going now was just pure intimacy I mean that's the best way I can describe it it wasn't a and while I don't want, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth, it was more of, I, I, I can't, I can't live eternity, eternity. The desire to never be separated from him overrode the desire to feel the lake of fire, to feel that anguish. Now I don't want to go to the lake of fire, not because of the pain and the suffering, but because I'm going to be separated from my my love I'm gonna be separated from my maker my my savior the love of the love of my lives temporary and eternal and to never know to never see or be able to see him in his full glory to never know the full 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 story 
to never experience his kingdom terrified me. Like, I, I, can't, I can't imagine being separated from Yahweh or Yeshua. I can't. I can't imagine never feeling them ever again. It's, it's too overwhelming. It's too, it's, it, it's, it, the, the thought alone would probably kill me. That thought was almost as excruciating as me asking him three years ago to understand fully if he could show me so I could understand fully what he feels when we celebrate abominable holidays, a blasphemous holidays in his name. And it was excruciating. And it got me thinking that I spent most of my life just not wanting to go to hell for the weeping and the gnashing of teeth, but I didn't want, not want to go to hell because I was going to be separated from him. And once you realize that the Torah is the character of Messiah and of Yahweh, you want to walk in that way because it is his character. And then his people turning from sin and turning to his father and then telling others to turn from sin and turn to the, his father is the very heartbeat of Messiah. Once you figure that out, uh, the heavens open up. It's wild. I think that is what is missing. That is what is missing. See, we automatically assume that when you grow up in church that, oh, you do the works of the law, then you're under bondage, which that's a blasphemous statement, so be careful what you say. But we're taught that we're not supposed to do that, and or we're not we don't have to do that when the heartbeat of Messiah is for all people to do that, walk like him and be reconciled back to the Father. To make disciples, and it just hit me. My whole life I'd spent not wanting to go to hell, but it wasn't spent not wanting to be separated from my Messiah. And I felt every ounce of the desire of not wanting to be separated from him for eternity. And it breaks my heart that people will assume that they know him without ever asking him or seeking it out on their own just because they think that they can get out of hell. When our Messiah said the opposite, and that's terrifying because it's like, I can't imagine. I don't want anybody to feel being separated from Yahweh or Yeshua. I don't ever want to feel that. I don't ever want to experience that. It kind of made everything that we want in this life. Because, I mean, truth be told, yeah, I loved Jesus. I loved him growing up. But my heart was after things of this world. A good life, a good house, a good job. Um, my dreams. It was all about my dreams. And me experiencing happiness on this earth. It wasn't about the joy of Yahweh. It wasn't about basking in his presence or living a righteous life. If I was a good person, I was okay, you know? See, we're taught in church that as long as you do X, Y, and Z, and then the rest of your life is spent pursuing the things of this world, spiritually and physically, you don't love him. And if you don't love him, you're gonna experience separation from him because you were separated from him while you lived. You didn't want him while you lived. Why is he going to let you in if you didn't want him while you lived? So you're going to experience the fullness of what you truly wanted, which is separation from him. And woo! Mm -mm. No, that thought terrifies me. I, I don't ever want to hear depart from me. I never knew you. Because then I'll never get to know him. I'll never get to know him fully. And all I want is to know him fully. All I want to do is please him. See, Torah was never about salvation. It was never given to people for salvation. It was given to a redeemed people. Mama. Saved people already. And it's just like marriage. You're not given that intimacy. You're not given that um, responsibility of walking in your vows in the covenant of marriage if you're not married. And it, and it grows with time. Same with Messiah. You get married, you get saved, and then you grow walking in him, getting to know him, growing deeper in intimacy. Once that clicked for me, my whole world changed. There's two reasons why Christians will hear, depart from me, I never knew you. One, they never loved him because they never followed God's commandments. Two, they were more focused on getting something from the Holy Spirit and the Father and Messiah instead of humbly serving him.
I'm living my life so I get to know him for eternity.